So today I want to talk about something very, very interesting called financial planning. It's often said that failure to plan is planning to fail. I'm so passionate about financial wellness, ensuring that you make better financial decisions. But how do you make better financial decisions? It starts by being informed on how money functions and how money works. The finest definition for financial literacy is understanding the nature and character of money, in particular, how money works. People who are financially well, these are people who are deliberate about planning their finances. So, like we promised you, we're going to be running these episodes just to be able to equip you and empower you with the skills that you need in order for you to make better financial decisions. And in this particular episode, I want to talk about something so interesting called financial planning. What is financial planning? Do you even need to plan your finances? If you need to plan your finances, how do you do that? We are operating in an environment as well that is lots and lots of risk. How do you plan in such an environment? And how do you ensure that your interests are actually catered for in such an environment? So today, we're going to have this conversation of financial planning. And it's courtesy of my good friends from Life Offices Association. And if you watched the previous episodes, you have enjoyed it. And many people actually give me an amazing feedback. Thank you so much for the wisdom that you shared. And today, we've got uh, none other than Mr. Rufai from Life Offices Association. Uh, he's been doing insurance and assurance for the past how many years? <laughs> I, I remember he said he started in 1995. Yes. Mm, I want you to imagine what were you doing in 1995. But one thing that I've really enjoyed from interacting with you is the wealth of experiences that you actually bring. And we truly, truly appreciate you uh, for doing that. So uh, at the end of this program, we're going to be giving some amazing giveaways. You'll be able to see them on the screen. So watch, don't go anywhere, and ensure that you're also taking notes so the questions are going to derive them from this particular program on financial planning. So, Mr. Fai, I want to talk about uh, financial planning, in particular, the basics of financial planning. And the question that people would ordinarily ask is, what is financial planning? Financial planning is one of those things that a lot of our people yep. do not um, take serious about, mm. very serious in their lives. True. Is the process of coming together with a plan. Very important. A plan. To take care of your financial needs today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, yep. 20 years, 30 years down the road. Mm. You need to come up with a plan that looks at those things. Take care of your needs today, tomorrow, and the future. Very true. You know, I, I like what you're saying, your needs today. Was every day when you wake up, you have got needs. Tomorrow, it's also speaking not just about the following day, but one day you're actually going to be alive, but you're not going to be working. And somehow you also need to be able to plan for that particular period. So we, we want to ask about the fundamental components. What are the fundamental components of financial planning that everyone should actually know? The starting point is for any plan, you need to have a goal. Yep. Where do you want to get to? Very important. If it is a goal for tomorrow, yep. how are you going to survive tomorrow? If you are a 30-year-old, you're going to talk about how you're going to pick the key, how you're going to go to, to, to work, how you're going to pick these kids and take them home, mm -hmm. because you've got a school run, and uh, several other things that happened in the day. Yep. Then uh, if it is maybe 20 years down the road, yep. things would have changed you need to have different goals for 20 years and 40 years down the road you need to to have you know those goals that meet your 40 year needs mm. and maybe then you are looking at retirement so if that's the case what then do you do you need to do a situation analysis first mm. you need to assess those needs classify them obviously yeah immediate needs yep medium term needs long term needs yeah and then you can be able to see how then can you plan for them that's very true if there are needs that you require to be taken care of five years down the road and you need to save for them starting today yeah you might have to calculate that in five years i'll need to spend a thousand or two thousand how do i raise it you start setting aside 
the money on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, or, or, or on a weekly basis, at least you've got a plan to meet that medium term goal. You've got a plan to meet that 20 year old term. You've got a plan to meet the 40 year old term. I've also talked about uh, if you are starting to work, you retire maybe 40 years down the road. Yeah. And as you start to work, you need to plan for your retirement. Mm. It's critical. Yeah. A lot of people think that, uh, well, I'm too young. I'm just starting <laughs> to think to about work. retirement. I won't talk about retirement. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is retirement will come at the end of 40 years. And, and you need to start planning for it today. Very, very interesting. And it's an interesting part about retirement. Uh, life can actually retire you. Mm. So let's say you drop dead. That's a form of retirement. Mm. Uh, let's say you fall sick and you're totally incapacitated mm -hmm. and you can't even work. Mm. That's a form of retirement. Let's say your company says we no longer need you. You are laid off? You're laid off. That's a form of retirement as well. Mm. Then you can also say, I'm tired. I think we were talking about that last time. Mm. And, and, and I like the part you're saying that even if you're a young person, mm. you don't need to postpone the conversation around retirement. What, yeah, around retirement. Mm. And in fact, um, I, th I think one thing we also need to do is to normalize conversations around retirement. Mm. Yeah, what's your game plan? What's your what's your financial plan in terms of um, retirement? So you talked about the needs analysis, uh, situational analysis, and I think these are very fundamental tools. But why is it actually important to plan? Because I think this is one of the things people take for granted. I was going to finish on, on, on no, financial, yeah. basics of financial yeah. planning. You also have to plan for tax. Yeah. It's a critical thing. Zebra. Yes. <laughs> You're right. You need to set aside for insurance. insurance I, I, I agree. Insurance. I agree. You know, life, short term, uh, everything that comes in there, even business and, and stuff. No, very important. But, but and then you need to yeah. plan for estate. Yeah, I was actually wanting to speak on that as well. That's very, very important. I actually wanted to explain further on that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. At some point in time, we all die. And that's true. It's coming, actually. Yeah. And we need to make sure that on our death, those beneficiaries who remain uh, do not find it difficult to manage the estate or your assets that Absolutely. you leave behind. Absolutely. There are some taxes that are paid to the authorities. Master's office. Yes. And those have to be paid. Estate duty. Now, if you die and you haven't managed that properly, it's a burden on your beneficiaries. Significant one, actually. Yeah. So you've got to plan for that. Because mm. well, it's coming. True. In, in fact, um, you, you mentioned that in the last uh, conversation we did, that a number of people, you live significant properties. And when you die, um, and, and by the way, this is what happens. When you die, your estate is valued. Mm. And the master expects a certain percentage from the estate. The, from the estate. Mm. And majority of the times, um, you notice that many people have got assets, but they don't have the liquidity. Mm. So let's say the duty is around 100,000, depending, of course, with the size of your estate. Mm. And your beneficiaries don't have the means mm. to raise the $100,000. So majority of the times, you find that the master will actually have to cause one of the assets liquidate them it has to be sold so they can pay for estate duty. true mm -hmm. so i think you're bringing a fundamental point on estate planning being proactive but also we also want to hear some of the tools that people can use later on when you are, mm -hmm. are done with the basics or now you can actually avoid such mm -hmm. a scenario yeah you also have debt management mm -hmm. as you go yes. in life sometimes you take debt whether it's a mortgage or it's a, all those things need to be taken care of in your planning uh, cash management is one of them. Yeah. In your personal life, you probably want to make sure that uh, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you are not able to finance your day-to-day -day activities. Yeah, yeah true. Um, you and this is important because it requires that you look at your income mm. and how it can sustain you and That's how true. you can plan for it so that is there wherever you need it. I agree. However small it is, mm. because planning is not only for people who have got lots of money. Everyone. 
even a small amount that you earn per family yep. can be planned for. That's true. And make things work within your own means. Mm, mm, mm. Then obviously, after all is done, you need to review every now and again. Changes. Financial planning is not a one-day thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a journey. It's a journey. Maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe two years. You need to review that. Absolutely. So those are the basics of financial planning. You really have to follow them through so you can be able to come up with uh, a plan that suits your financial That's true. goals. That's true. And in fact, um, just to emphasize the point you were talking about, situation analysis, was no situations are the same. Um, just being able to understand your unique needs as an individual, the complex uh, setup in your particular family, even how you even make the money, that becomes a very important consideration. And that should also influence in terms of how you plan, how you do uh, your things. So the next question that I want us to look at is the life stages. Uh, because you see, life is a series of stages. Mm. And I think um, every stage also has got a role to play mm. in terms of influencing your, uh, your financial plan. So I, I want us to discuss about how does a financial planning process change throughout the different stages. You talked about someone who's starting off in their life then some are young adults, some are already starting a family, mm. then ultimately retirement. Yeah. 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 Yes, I think we could classify, basically, we could classify, it ranges from here and there, but we could classify uh, the life stages into maybe four or five. From zero to 19, that's uh, the early stages. Mm. You're not raising you. <laughs> Other get, right? people to look after you. Oh, I miss that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about the rate. No. What's happening in town? You just wake up. <laughs> yeah. So from um, 20 to maybe 29, 30, yeah, yeah. you're beginning to set yourself up. Mm. You're beginning to get an income Yep. in a normal environment. Yeah. Yes beginning to get an income and uh, you're beginning to set up yourself 30 to maybe 45 to 40 45 yeah. somewhere there you are beginning to build your wealth mm, very very important mm. wealth creation yeah and then from there to maybe 55 you're consolidating your wealth mm. and after that 60 and above the retirement I want to rest you want to rest so you want to make sure that from age 20 when you start working mm. you start your financial plans yeah. that will make sure ultimately that you've got a an adequate retirement mm. retirement poverty because is normally at the retirement you've got no means of earning income that's it, actually. Unless if you have put together plans yeah. to make sure that you earn income at that period. So you've got to start early. I think I have to emphasize this. Yeah, start early. You have to start early. Plan as early as possible. And uh, review those uh, plans as you go. Now go on and say that uh, given those uh, the segments that I've put together. There's different dispositions to risk. Mm, yeah, that's actually a very interesting part. Why? Because, uh, okay, with zero to 19, there's no risk because you're not earning <laughs> your own income. Yeah. But from 19 to 20, from 20 to 29, yeah. uh, the tendency is, I'm far away from retirement. Mm, I still have time. I still have time. Yeah, that's one of the biggest lies. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the normal argument is if I put together an investment uh, portfolio, which I manage and try and raise some money and, and things like that, uh, I can afford to take risk. Mm. Because I'm young. Yeah. I still have the energy. <laughs> I still have the energy. If the risk materializes and I lose everything, it doesn't matter. I can start again. I can start again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you're young. Yeah, yeah. So the disposition to risk 
Mm. It's likely to be high. All right. And that's very interesting. If you are somebody who is investing on the stock exchange, you are the kind of person who is likely to consider risk equities mm. or risky stocks. Yeah. In other words, you are the kind of person who are likely to consider a, you know, small, what they call small cap, small companies. Uh, we have got, we don't have a lot of experience, but who, if they do well, are likely to make lots of money and yeah, give yeah. you a lot of mm. value in your investments. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they're also likely to lose. You lose everything. Yes. Yeah. Because the higher the risk, the higher the return. Yep. The lower the risk, obviously, the yeah, lower yeah, the true. returns. So that's where you're likely to invest. Mm. Age 30, maybe going forward up to 40 or so, 50, yeah. somewhere there. And then many people actually fall in that category. Yeah, you might uh, be starting to look at risk and saying, uh, I need to slow down in my risk. Mm. Why? Because uh, uh, you're also looking forward and saying, uh, I don't want to lose everything at age 40. Yeah, yeah. Start afresh. Sometimes you can't even imagine starting again. Which is why when you look at uh, the loss of value that you experienced in 2009, yeah. it was a big disaster for anyone yeah, who yeah, was yeah. somewhere at the age of 30 to yeah. 40. Yeah. Why? Because when it comes to investments, due to, to retirement investments, you probably came to zero. They wiped out. You started afresh. So many people with zeros, eh? Yes. Yeah. And uh, that was a, I would call it a national disaster. Because it affected everyone. No, it did actually. Um, I, I remember um, I was on radio some some day, and someone says, "Mdara, do you know I had retired? I've gone back to work." Yes, you've got no choice. You have no choice. So imagine somebody who retired in uh, two thousand and nine. Wow. They come out. They came out with nothing. And the shift. Yeah. yeah. So so. That's so risk disposition there. Yeah. Yeah, there are some people who are naturally uh, not risk averse, others who are risk averse and, and, and stages. But anything from 55 to going forward, <laughs> the person will tell you that, listen, I need to make sure that when I retire five years from now, my money is there so it can take care of yeah, me on true. my retirement. Yeah. So those people are likely to be very risk averse. Mm. They want to consolidate. They want to make sure that whatever is there it's is preserved. available in their retirement. Very important consideration as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. So they would rather not take risks. And surely I wouldn't take risks myself. At 55, 60. <laughs> and, and, and I made a decision that I wouldn't be involved in any risk uh, contracts, in any... A risk that will give me sleepless sleepless nights. Trying to imagine where your money is. Yeah, because if you do that, you end up with, uh, you know, age. Yeah. yeah. Age wise diseases. True. Like BP. They approach yeah. on you because uh, you have taken risks. Let's the young one take the risks. That's at true. Age 20, 25. They can always adjust in, in yeah, yeah. life. Yeah. So, so. That those are the planning stages and the risk dispositions. Very, very important. Yeah. And uh, that's also important to investment managers and, and uh, those who manage uh, um, or who provide advice to, to, to the ordinary person to make sure that as you give them or as you assess their risks, yeah. you take care of also their risk disposition. Mm. To make sure that you provide them with the appropriate product. No, I agree. The word appropriate is very, very important. You don't want to give a, 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 a to buy stocks, risky stocks, mm. for somebody who's aged 59. They're looking at something to give them money. Yes. You want to make sure that you give them stocks that are conser conservative, that will preserve value. Also consistent. Yeah. Normally, in some in countries, you would look at uh, government bonds because those ones will give you a low return, but they will make sure that at age 60, your money is there. And that's very important. Yes. 
Because one of the things that you notice in retirement is liquidity and cash flow. Mm. Very, very important. Mm. Um, now you find some people, they've got a house, but they don't have money. Mm. So you find uh, now someone needs to put a tenant in a very beautiful house inside. <laughs> yes. So that they can just pay $100, which they can use to pay the local authority, uh, maybe to pay ZESA, ETC. So those conversations are very important. In fact, I have noticed the, in some uh, some stages, in some cases, yeah. uh, retired, retiring couples will... Uh, Maybe leave their small house and move on to a small place. Yeah, yeah. So that they can lease True. the big house and move on to a smaller place where, you know, maybe two bedrooms. They don't need much. Yeah. And, uh, and the bigger house they can lease out to and get some income from their rental income. Very, very important. Uh, it's to try and make sure that you've got cash. I agree. Coming in. In fact, what we're actually going to do, one of the episodes that I think, we're actually going to talk about retirement in general, because I think it's one of the areas that I think is fundamentally neglected. So still on financial planning, I want to talk about the role of life insurance. And I think uh, last time when we talk about the couch of insurance, I think it's something that's very, very important. But I want to know how does life insurance fit into the overall financial strategy? Uh, you were talking about risk. And I think the moment you mentioned risk, the next thing that's important is number one, how do we manage the risk? risk. Um, because that the, the advantage about life is number one, knowing that life is all about risk. Mm -hmm. um, and every day you wake up, the risks are associated with that. When you grow up, there are risks associated with that. When mm. you drive, there are risks associated with that. Mm. So how does life insurance uh, fit into the overall financial strategy? You can't have a personal financial strategy without uh, insurance. Mm. That's the as a principle. It's, it's, it's one of those things that you really have to consider whenever you're doing your financial planning. Very important. Why? Because uh, life insurance will take care of you in terms of risk associated with your life. Yeah. All right? Uh, and therefore take care of your beneficiaries mm -hmm. in terms of any risk associated with your life. I agree. It'll take care of you in terms of uh, a retirement, allow you to put together something for retirement. It took care of you in terms of um, a funeral. Mm. Set aside something for funeral. Life is happening. Yes. It will take care of you in terms of even uh, health. Yeah. A critical component of life. Medical insurance. Medical insurance so that uh, you can always mend your, your, you've got an opportunity to mend your health as you go and as you get old. Yeah. Um, so in every planning process, life insurance will mitigate uh, uh, the, 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 the risks mm. associated with yourselves. Very important. And uh, yeah, like I said in the past, you can't do any such planning without life insurance. True. In fact, any, any financial plan that doesn't address issues to do with risk, it's not a good financial plan. Mm. You build a house. What if a fire happens? How are you going to replace your house? Mm. You bought your house. Someone breaks into your house. Mm -hmm. You are in your retirement stages. How do you actually replace your house? So, so I think normalizing um, addressing issues to do with risk becomes a fundamental uh, issue. So, the question that I want to deal with is about myths and uh, facts. Right. So every time you talk about life insurance, hey, Mariedu, that's usually the question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and obviously you can't run away from such conversations. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we still need to go back to say, okay, what are some of the common myths okay. uh, about uh, life insurance that people uh, should actually be aware of and um, also want, want to be able to address some of the facts that often get misunderstood when it comes to life insurance. I remember the point we made last time that the need is still there, and I think mm. it's something that is very, very important. Yes. Yeah. Can we can we address some of the myths that we find? Yes, the myths. Some of them that I can I put quite a number. Yeah. One, singles. <laughs> <laughs> singles believe that life insurance is not for them. And one, mm, it's for the elderly. Ah, uh, so, those want to die. Yeah. Yeah. But anyone can die anytime. So sad, eh? Yeah. Um. And. Uh, uh, without cover, you give a burden to those who 
So true. Yeah. So um, second one is they believe it's expensive. Life insurance is not expensive. It's customized, actually. It's customized. Your needs, your goals. Meet your needs. Yeah. And in the first place, before they even calculate the cover that you need, they look at your income. Wow. And they've got means and ways of determining uh, the premiums that you pay so that it doesn't overburden you. That's, that's very interesting, actually. So it's not expensive. It's real. Yeah. And it covers your needs and becomes available as and when you need it. You know, I, I know somebody who took out a life insurance product for $5. Um, when the person that they actually insured passed on, they got $5,000. Mm. And that $5,000 was the money they actually needed. <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes, you know, many people take it for granted. They think mm. that you always have the money. Mm. But $5,000 for someone who has got children who wants to go into school, mm. uh, who has got uh, rent that needs to be paid, mm. it can give you a start. Exactly. Uh, rather than that you don't have anything, anything at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some will say I've got a group life cover. Ah. It's being run by old much well, so I'm comfortable. Mm. It's not necessarily adequate it doesn't cover you group life cover is for pension ah. your personal life insurance is critical you need to have it as an individual quality. yeah and it's part of your planning process that's true yeah and some will say no 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 i'm not a breadwinner in my family why do i need <laughs> life insurance for all right life insurance is for breadwinners okay i'm just an ordinary citizen that's, eh? that's not uh, <laughs> and I think these are the things that people always yeah, yeah. use to defend why they don't. Exactly. Yeah. Some will say I'm healthy. What I'm not going I, in with it. What do I need life insurance for when I'm this healthy? You know. But, but, but you see, if you if you've seen people have died through accidents, that's when you realize life is not guaranteed. Yeah. It's um, not. And at times we think we watch time, only to realize no, you don't actually have time. Mm. Yeah. Some also think uh, life insurance is uh, for uh, investments. It's more investments oriented than protection. Mm. Uh, but the truth is life insurance is a protection product. And it's very important. You need it. It protects it. you against the, the risks that you face out there. Yeah. Some will go further and say uh, a term life insurance is something that covers for a period, uh, you know, from say five years and it matures. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is a waste of time. I'd rather put my money in an investment. Where it can grow. Yeah, but investment has got a lot of risks. Yeah, true. And that risk, you cannot necessarily manage it. Mm. Whereas life insurance companies are professional risk managers. They wake up to manage risk. Yes. So yeah. they will be able to manage it better for you. Yeah. Um, and such similar people would also talk about uh, a whole life policy as the best uh, policy. So they would find that and use that as an excuse not to take a term policy. Quite a number of myths. Yeah. Yeah. Um, taxation is also another issue. In some jurisdictions, Life insurance is not taxable. Wow. You know, when you get your... Your money, just get it, the, the, the assured amount. Yes. Even pensions mm. are not taxable. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, we've been working on that ourselves to try and make sure that authorities uh, take into account that so that we can be able to avail mm. more income. Yeah. to our pensioners. That's very true. So that we don't tax them. Yeah. And we make sure that they're more, there's more money made available. After all, whatever they're getting right now is very minimal. Yeah, yeah. So if the taxman comes in and takes some of it, Badly too. that uh, will not, uh, you know... Uh, yeah. And some will say, I can't afford life insurance. Uh, and that's also a myth, eh? It's a myth. Um, insurance is easily affordable. Take a product that speaks to your needs mm. and also that you can afford. Yes. 
And I think that's also one thing I want to encourage you to, it doesn't cost you anything, by the way. Uh, and by the way, we don't sell any products. Um, call whichever provider, sit down, schedule an appointment, and get a presentation on some of the products that can actually help you. And there are many USD products, by the way, that you can actually take out to protect yourself, protect your family, and also protect the assets that you actually have. So it's not expensive. You'd rather take something. And when you need it, I think you've got an amazing fallback position. I want us to, because of our time, I want us to look at um, building a financial strategy. And I think this is one thing that I want to um, help many people who are watching us today. Uh, what steps should someone take to build a comprehensive financial strategy that also includes life insurance? Right. The starting point is obviously, I think as I have indicated earlier, yep. you need to come set up some goals. Mm, your life goals. Definition of those goals is critical. Smart goals. Yes. Yeah. Then you need to evaluate your income. Mm. Where is your money coming from? Where is your money coming from? Yeah. A lot of us who have one source of income, but I've heard you in the past talk yeah, about multiple uh, streams. Multiple streams of income. Yeah, yeah. That's critical. Very true. Because you can't plan for something when you don't have money coming in. Yeah, yeah true. You've got to plan for that. I agree. You've got to assess your insurance coverage. Mm. Where are you in terms of insurance coverage yeah. at the moment? Take, for instance, the, the, the life insurance advisors will tell you that uh, given the income that you get, you should be covered to the tune of maybe 1 million yeah. or 500,000, but you are currently covered to the tune of 200,000. Mm. So you should re-look at your planning process and see how you can cover that gap, yeah. right? So that's critical in terms of what is your insurance coverage, how much are you covered? To what tune are you covered? Mm. Same thing goes to retirement. You should be able to say every year, maybe end of the year, eh, I want to retire at an income of uh, maybe $600 a month. Yeah. But given my savings or the amount of money that I'm saving today, will I be able to achieve that? Mm. Maybe I'll be able to achieve a, a two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. So how much more should I put into sure. my retirement kit? Yeah. So that I can be able to achieve the amount that I want to to achieve. Yeah. It also requires you to assess the market. Yeah. In our case, that is particularly important. Yeah. The way the currency has been behaving is of critical importance. Yeah. The losses that we have experience in the last uh, yeah, two yeah. decades yeah 2009 2018 20, 23 and uh, we might also be as we speak in another uh, problem mm. so you have to assess the market yeah and come up with the plans that align to the market that's true context yes yeah. maybe you don't want to look at 20 years in your planning process. Mm, you made one short, you might one short to term. look at five years. Yeah. Because in five years, a lot of the environment will change. Yeah. A lot of variables will yeah. change. Yeah. You might want to make sure that you 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 you, you do that. Another part is uh, you have to assess economic risks mm. that I've talked about. Yeah, you did. Um, you need to make sure you've got the budgets yeah. and cash flow movements for your personal. You need to manage your debt. Very important. Debt management. You need to look at your investments and uh, diversifications. Mm -hmm. Where do you place the extra money that you have yeah. so that it can earn you or it can sweat for you? Yeah, rather than just keep it. That's critical. You don't want to keep your money in the pillow. No, you can't. It doesn't grow. <laughs> so you've got to look at that. Uh, I've talked about insurance and protection. What yeah. products do you have? How cover? How much covered are you? You've got to look at your retirement planning. Yeah. Where are you in terms of retiring planning? You should be able to identify those gaps. Mm. 
How far are you? So if you reduce the planning period to say five years, then you can be able to adjust that, you know, so that you don't come to age 55 and you realize there's nothing in your in your retirement kit. And you're exposed thoroughly. You are extremely exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, your estate planning, you need to continuously review it. And estate planning also involves some uh, not so good uh, issues, yeah. but, uh, which are critical. You have to go through them. Things like who are the beneficiaries you put in there? <laughs> who should be removed and who should be included? <laughs> I think we should also talk about estate planning as a financial planning tool. Yeah. Uh, in the next program as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, you need to obviously to review every now and again. See the changes. Yes. Yeah. And like I said, uh, if the environment is volatile, yeah. probably reduce the review period. Maybe yeah. six months, maybe one year. Yeah. Other than rather than five years and, and so on. You need to constantly review so that you are able to meet your financial goals That's true. at the end of the day. Wonderful. All right, time has moved. Um, so like we said, we've got um, uh, some giveaways um, to give you just for listening. We're going to be asking a question before we terminate this conversation today, but I hope you've managed to extract one or two things. You have been in insurance for the longest. I want you to tell us, uh, you once told me a very interesting story, uh, the $5 million story, but give us a bit of a story that you experience in life uh, insurance that you know can also inspire someone because many people they take actually these things for granted yes uh, insurance companies are there to pay claims mm, not to avoid them not to avoid them and that's critical yeah and that's a requirement so if that's the case you put together a policy and you're paying for it and you are and the risk materializes mm. you need to be paid that's true but here is an example i think i've told you that example in yeah, the past. yeah yeah i approached a guy he had a business yeah and i gave him two policies well i was going to give him two policies yeah um a policy to cover his life yeah in the event of his death obviously was going to be paid a certain a reasonable sum of money a decent amount of money very decent amount of money <laughs> and this particular insurance company is a very reputable company yeah whose claim or mantra is we pay our claims they look up to that right. and then i gave him a key person policy yeah key person is a policy intended to cover a business Mm. In the event of the key person dying, the yeah. one running the business, uh, the insurance company will pay a certain amount, agreed. Upon, yeah. And uh, they will be able to hire a reputable person to replace that lost key person so that the business can continue to run smoothly. Yeah. All in all, that cover, the covers that I gave that person, it's not in this jurisdiction, but elsewhere, yeah. was amounting to a 40 million rand. 40 million rands. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, my client didn't sign up. Wow. <laughs> what happened next? And unfortunately, eight months down the road, he died of a natural disease. Which was going to entitle his family yes to get 40 the, million rands and at the time of about six million us wow so guys six million dollars life happens i think that's the point that we need to stress life does actually happen so if you've been watching we want to give away some prizes and i want you to give us the answer on the comment section and we're going to ask you number one what is financial planning uh, we want to know what is financial planning mr fai gave us a definition of what financial planning is so let us have the answer to that uh, in the comment section. Then he talked about risk disposition. He talked about the various age groups uh, and the levels of risk that are involved. I want you to just give us uh, what uh, risk is associated with a particular range of people. would love to hear from you. So uh, the amazing giveaways, we're going to be doing more and more of these conversations just to equip you and to empower you in today's conversation was on financial planning, understanding the fundamentals 
and the basics of financial planning. So the purpose of financial planning is literally to tell your money where to go rather than to wonder where it went. And it's being able to take control of your financial destiny. And this is a conversation that has been brought to us by our good friends from Life Offices Association. And these are in existence just to help you make better decisions. And we want to encourage you to follow the advice, take on the advice, sit down with a professional and get assistance uh, that is going to ensure that you get some products that can actually help you, you and your family, or even your business. I think some of you, you know what happened with this fire in the other side of town. Imagine many of those people, they don't even have any some form of cover. The bottom line, the need is still there. The bottom line, you still need some form of fallback position. And that's why you need to normalize this culture of insurance. Mr. Fire, thank you so much for sparing your time. I know you're a very busy man, but we really thank you so much for sharing the wisdom uh, that you're always giving us and hoping that we will invite you again for the next conversation. Thank you. All right, so with that, I will call that a day and looking forward to hosting you uh, on the next conversation as we talk all things money, all things risk. Share this video with a friend and ensure that together we share information and we empower each other. If you want to learn more about Life Offices Association, you can go on the website that is on the screen and you'll find lots and lots of resources that can also help you as you start your financial journey. Until we meet, stay blessed.